What's going on, Army? I'm here today to tell you about how I met Joe, or better yet, how I ended up in prison where I met Joe. It was 2008. I was a hot mess. I was like a ramen noodle that you boiled just a little too long. I was doing all sorts of things that I wasn't supposed to be doing. And one of them was not going to see my probation officer. Secondly, I was committing crimes. I was robbing repo lots. This is what I would eventually end up going to prison for. Well, I got caught one night. A whole bunch of stuff happened that led up to this. I went out with a guy that I shouldn't have, and we ended up at this repo lot to make some money. We figured if we robbed this repo lot, get some car parts, and we knew people who needed some things. So that's what we were doing. Well, it turns out there was somebody that watched us do the whole thing, called the cops, and we were caught red-handed. Then no matter how much I tried to deny that, that I'm not the guy that they seen, yeah, they didn't believe me. I wonder why. You know, anybody could be wearing red basketball shorts and a wife beater at 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't understand how they just picked me out of all the people that weren't outside. Doesn't make any sense. So, I end up in jail with a $10,000 bond. It's the middle of 2008. I get the bond the next day. I'm out back doing the same old dumb stuff I was doing. First day I go to court, the lawyer that I have is like, mm, you're guilty, you're going to jail, you're probably gonna get some time. I was like, uh, I won't be coming back to court. So that's exactly what I did. I did not show up for court. I was ducking. Ah oh, man, I was ducking. Boy, they couldn't find me for nothing. And the crazy thing is, I was right at the address that was on the bond paper. I just, you know, I was elusive, it was like a mongoose, like mm, fast and slick and moving and can't catch me. That's how I was thinking. I was like, man, I'll just be on the run forever. Yeah, um, that didn't happen. Six months after I caught the charge, me and my son's mother got into an argument. She didn't want to go with me. I was trying to go to my dad's house to watch a football game, drink a couple beers. I had already been drinking. I was already drunk, actually. And I was driving my mama's car. So I picked up my Son's mother from her job. We got into an argument. I ended up dropping her off, leaving. I was upset. And I ended up crashing the car into somebody's yard, like right by my dad's house, literally at the corner of my dad's court. I was flying down the road and I was flying, I was doing like 35 and a 25 or something like that. And I noticed my dad's street was about to pass me. And instead of trying to slow down, I just cut the wheel left, car turned a little bit, and then slid, went up in their yard, smashed the front tire all up into the car, and then I backed out, drove, and parked it in my dad's driveway. About 20 minutes later, the cops are there. Who's driving this blue Accord? My dad was like, that's uh, him, my son. They were like, oh, well, the people don't want to press charges. We just had to make sure everybody was all right, and uh, can we run your name? I was like, mm. This is it. This is where it all ended. And it did end right there. I ended up going to jail that night. They took me down to Portsmouth, put me in the dungeon for like two or three days. And then I ended up in Chesapeake. And soon after that, I ended up in Virginia Beach. And through all this time, it took about two years before I was completely finished and on my way to prison. I ended up with six years for a grand larceny a felony destruction of property. Those are the only two felonies that I caught. Chesapeake gave me one year on those charges. Virginia Beach gave me five years on my violation. They were like, mm, we're done with you. Five years on my violation, that was it. I was like, all right, I'm on my way. So I sat in the jail for a while and then finally, finally, one night, I heard my name get called. Torn Loft. You mean tore it off? And he was like, what did I pack your stuff. I knew where I was going. No more being inside. I mean, just the thought of being able to go out and walk around and get some fresh air was just mind boggling. Just to know that soon I'd be doing something different. Man, if you have ever been to prison, you know that prison is better than jail. It sucks that that is true, but it is. Prison sucks itself, 100% sucks. Like, nobody's like, hey, what do you want to do tonight? I don't know, let's go to prison. No, that doesn't happen. Nobody chooses to go there. They choose to do the stuff that gets them sent there, and then they immediately regret the things that they did. I know I did. I mean, I'm sure there's some people out there that killed somebody in the heat of passion because hurt somebody in their family, and yeah, 
No, I wouldn't regret going to prison for that if they were to send me. But most of the people that are in prison, I'm pretty sure, either regret what they did that got them sent there or are what you would label in um, society as psychopath, sociopath, other paths, the wrong paths. I don't know. Those are the people that are in there that are just like, oh, yeah, I killed that dude. That is just crazy to me. When I left the jail, I went to a receiving, and I was at that receiving for about three months. They came and told me, you're going to Halifax. I said, Halifax? What is Halifax? Someone told me it was a road camp. I was like, oh. They were like, yeah, level one. Yeah, I went to a kitty camp, and that's all right with me. It was comfortable. I didn't have to worry about people getting stabbed up, and yeah, there was none of that going on. You know, people are like, well, you was at a soft camp and you ain't never done no real time. Man, any time is real time. I'm just trying to understand why somebody would rather be at a place where they got to pack a shank or pay somebody to protect them. Man, all that stuff is crazy. Like, hey, look, I'm going to give you $30, man. While I'm at work, keep an eye on my... No, nah, man. No, nah, I had it sweet. I had a sweet gig. I had a sweet... Bed assignment, I was chilling. I was chilling. I cut trees down with chainsaws. I worked out, played softball, watched TV, and that was it. I mean, I, I was, I don't want to say I was enjoying my time. I made myself comfortable for the duration, you know? Ain't no reason to sit in there and wallow over where you're at. It's absolutely ridiculous. I hate those people. Well, I don't hate nobody. But I can't stand talking to somebody and all they would talk about is, man, I can't believe I'm here. Or you get into a conversation. This is the worst. You go talk to your homeboy after you got a visit and all he want to talk about is, man, don't nobody come see me. I'll never get a visit. Dude, stop. Like, I would stop hanging out with people like that. Well, Joe was one of those people. No, I'm just like, <laughs> He's listening, I just had to shoot that shot. Man, now we all do that, I did it too. But Joe wasn't one of those type people. Joe, when I met Joe, Joe was at the beginning of his like tattoo career, I would like to say. We hung out, I looked at a lot of his artwork. We had a little bit of a, a instant connection because like the first day I got there, this guy, you know, they found out I was from where I'm from and like all these guys were like, come on, we're about to take a, a picture, 757 represent. They took like a big group picture and they brought me in and I wasn't even in the building for like three hours. And because of that, you know, you know, Joe found out, he's like, oh, you're from where I'm from at. Hey, blah, 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 we got to talking. We knew some of the same people. We liked some of the same things, done some of the same things. And we had almost the same amount of time left. You know, Joe had one more year than I did. And we both got locked up. I believe in December of 2008. I think I think that happened for a reason. I really do. But me and Joe met, and we got really tight, man. We got really tight really quick. We were there. I don't know. I was at that camp for about a year. And man, Joe blew my mind with his ideas. Like when I was there, I think this was the beginning of the new Joe when I first met him. You know, he was like, you know, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Pumping out his cartoons like crazy, mailing them to different magazines and editors or whatever you would send cartoons to and you know he was he was just doing everything he could and then I ended up getting shipped to Indian Creek and then about a year later Joe showed up maybe not even a year later and when I finally seen him he was like Dave let me tell you what has been going on in my life man and just so much positive stuff had taken place a lot of negative stuff also that y'all have heard about you know like him going to the hole for having ibuprofen and getting shipped to another camp and stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, he had grown so much since the last time I seen him. It's these type of people that you want to surround yourself with. You know, I think if I would have spent more time with Joe than what I was doing while I was locked up, I think maybe it would have rubbed off on me. You see, Joe had the mentality that he was not going to come back to prison, right? And not just that, but that he was going to become something great. He knew it. He knew it in his head. He had said it. He had... He had said it out of his mouth and believed it in his head and he knew it was going to happen. 
And so he began, no matter how big the steps were, he began to step forward and step forward and step forward. You know, but I didn't see that because I didn't hang out with him as much anymore. We were in different buildings. I went home and I started messing up again. And then when Joe got home, he contacted me on Facebook and we linked up a couple times and I could see he was on the right track. He was doing what he was supposed to, but I wasn't. And I even told him that, you know, and that was, you know, we kind of had to go our separate ways, but man, prison, it can be a place of restoration. It really can, but you have to do it. We have to do it, but it doesn't even have to happen in prison. It can happen right now, today. Like if you just begin to dislike, or this is a good time to use the word hate. And because I use Joe's example, and that's why I'm, I've, I've come as far as I have. You know, I began to hate what I was doing and how I was living, and I wanted something better. And I wanted, I wanted something better just as much as I hated where I was. And so with that equation, you just got to change the way you think. You know, we're always telling ourselves we can't, I can't, I don't want to, I'm not good at this. I'm never going to be able to make it. All that's doing is putting us down. You know, I'm so glad that I met Joe because if I hadn't, I'd probably still be in that revolving door, stuck, like in a cartoon, like when you get wedged in it, when they get wedged and they're just going around and around. I'm being real, ladies and gentlemen. We can do something. You know, as Michael Jackson once said, man in the mirror. Y'all remember that, that, that song? You know that song, Cody? I'm talking about the man in the mirror. Man, change your mind right now about who you are and what you want to do and begin to move forward. One step at a time. Before you know it, you done took five steps and you look back and you're no longer where you used to be. Now, you might still have some of the stuff with you, but you have to... Just continue to move forward and start dropping off some of that old stuff. Out of all this, the one thing I want y'all to know is I have continually made the wrong choice. And I will say this over and over again every time I get a chance to. But the first time I made the hard decision and I did the right thing and I made the right choice, I felt 100% better about myself and my capabilities to continue to move forward. That is the truth. That is the hard facts of the situation. That if we can just get over that first little bump, if you can just win that one battle, the first battle, man, it becomes easier. And what we do is we'll slip backwards and we'll beat ourselves up. And then because we beat ourselves up, we'll slip backwards more and more and more until we find ourselves right where we used to be or even deeper than we used to be. But see, you gotta know, if you everybody's everybody slips, you're gonna slip. But you got to get up and keep moving forward. You got to. I thank God that I got a friend like Joe. I'm glad I met him. I'm glad I met him in prison. I'm glad we have that in common to where we care about each other now and know that we don't want one another to go back to that situation. You know, so this is what I got to say. Stay moving forward. APS Army, we're marching ahead. You feel me? We're all doing this. You know, whether you've been in prison or you know somebody that's been in prison, you're either marching away from something or you're marching to help somebody. Man, it's real. And this is what we're doing. APS for life, man. Enjoy it. So you know what I want you to do. I want you to enjoy life, the free world. I want you to never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!